Hello and welcome to One North Main Brockton's Magazine Show. We profile people, places, and events that make us city, our city of champions, oh so great. I am your host, Jay Miller, and the next half hour is action-packed. The theme today, it's new beginnings. We'll meet some new people to the city. We'll take a look at a new park, or maybe not so new. We'll talk about recovery, and we'll focus on a school that underwent some improvements. So sit back. Ah, relax and see what your community, the City of Champions, has to offer. We are at George E. Keith Park on the south side of Brockton, Campello style today. And wow, it was in a fantastic event that was just held to rededicate and reopen this beautiful park. It's a gem in this city, and there's a lot of history behind how it came to be a park. Let's find out more. Take a look. There's an old proverb that says, if you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. We here today know that that has proven that saying to be true. James Keith began our story when he immigrated to America from Scotland in 1662. George Keith continued it when he started the Walk Over Shoe Company over on Perkins Ave in 1874. Keith attracted and employed thousands of immigrants to work in his factory and provided for them recreational resources, medical and nutritional offerings unknown in the 19th century workplace. It is fitting that this park stands where not only his ancestral home once stood, but where his own home and that of his brother Myron stood in the shadow of his once great manufacturing facility. Myron Keith, his brother, added to that story when he followed the wishes of his brother, George, took down the family mansion, created this park, and handed the deed to then Mayor Lucy in 1952. The Keith family presented the deed to Mayor Lucy, who is Claire's uncle. The Keith Park Neighborhood Association began our part of the story with our first meeting on February 11th, 2014. Hard to believe it was that long ago, almost four years. Through the park cleanups, Easter egg hunts, community dining out nights, Friday night flicks in the park, flag day picnics, holiday lantern walks, and our most recent Campello 1917 pop-up village, we've worked to make this park, the George E. Keith Park, our Campello town green. I want to really thank the community for participating in this process. Something that um, I've, I've only been a part of, of Brockton for maybe three years now. And uh, a philosophy that the mayor and I share is that this is all of our city and we all have to be involved in planning and in creating place and restoring the things that we love, preserving the things that need to be protected, and growing in areas where we need to expand our economy. Before there's a plan, thanks to Beals and Thomas, before there's blueprints, thanks to Vozella Construction, there has to be a vision. And back in 2013, Mayor Carpenter and I had a conversation about community engagement, how it's important how it could look in Brockton, how to get it going, how it could benefit our citizens and our city. You know, Mr. Mayor, there's another saying we like at KPNA. 
If you think you're too small to make a difference, spend one night in a room with a mosquito. <laughs> but thanks to you, the mosquitoes of the Keith Park Neighborhood Association and the Campello community have made a difference here. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our mayor, Bill Carpenter. But I, the first thing I think of this morning is collaboration because truly a lot of different folks and groups came together to make this possible and Tim Carpenter from the Parks Department, Rob and his planning team, the BRA because we did also use some CDBG money to match the, the state grant money uh, and particularly as Lynn mentioned the Keith Park Neighborhood Association because uh, the community input and the community ownership of this park is what makes it work and it's what makes it worth the investment. It, it fits a larger goal and game plan of ours of, of reclaiming and reinvesting in all of our parks and playgrounds and green spaces and, and believing firmly that you stabilize neighborhoods, restore neighborhoods and improve business districts when the neighborhood and the people who live there reclaim ownership and control of the green spaces. Perfect. Oh, and look, they're getting watered. Oh, they're getting watered. Good. That I shall never see a poem as lovely as a tree. Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. Brockton Community Access and One North Main covers a lot of chamber events. This year, 2017, they introduced a new theme. Good afternoon, Metro South. It was a fantastic event. And I'm gonna give you two words why. Maria Stefanos. I'm a girl who grew up in Groveland, Massachusetts, which is way north. And it's near between Haverhill and Newburyport. And I never forget that. And I'm proud to say that I'm a local girl who grew up here. And I know how important our cities and towns are. So when I get up there and do the news, I care what happens in Brockton. Because my grandfather used to go to a store in Brockton to buy our feta cheese. I'm Greek if you didn't know that. <laughs> I care what happens in Stoughton. I care what happens in Newburyport and in Wellesley and in all the cities and towns. So I know what events like this mean to people like you and what it means to your community because I care what happens in your community because I talk about your communities and my heart breaks when bad things happen there um, and that's why I came out today simply to just reach out and say you know this is great that you guys care that this matters to you so that's why I'm, I'm here oh that's an awful thing right there because <laughs> my side and my Greek nose and thank you that's good much better I appreciate that you know you got to at this age you got to just you know get the right shots and the right lighting so we can take questions from the audience are you okay with that want me to bring the mic over does that help you no, that's good. I'm gonna get what's your name by the way Jay. Jay nice to meet you I'm Maria Maria Stefanos yes oh it's a pleasure wait 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 it's a pleasure. I love your work. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Are you from here? I am not. I am actually live in Abington. Uh, I grew up. I grew up. Let's see. Many years ago, I was born at South Shore Hospital. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, hi, hi Kathy. I'm Kathy Smith, Superintendent of Schools uh, in Brockton. We have 18,000 students in our district. I do have to say I'm one of these boring people at 62 that wears suits, but I love looking at what all of you wear. Oh, good! I, I love I this! I stations to look at what you're wearing. Well, you look nice yourself, so. I do murders and fires and stabbings and rapes and horrible, horrible stories. What it has taught me is that those moments, wrong Barretts, can't get into the right Barretts, it's taught me that that stuff doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. What am I going through? I can't get into a, a restaurant because I went to the wrong one. Okay. And I did go to the Route 24 rest stop so I could get some gum. And she said, seriously, this is on my day. And she said, I'm sorry, I've just reset the registers. You can't buy anything. So, so that's how the whole thing started. It was just one of those things. And 
Ed Harding broke his phone, and I'm trying to jailbreak my old phone to give to Ed Harding to put his SIM card in, and that didn't work. And AT&T is saying, he has Verizon, and you have AT&T. The point being is that it was one of those days. You ever have one of those days? Everything, all the doors are shutting in your face. And you know what? I'm going to sit on the set tonight at 4 o'clock because Emily Reamer, the 5 o'clock anchor, is pregnant and has gone into labor. <laughs> so while I'm here, they say, we need you to anchor the 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, and 11. And I have a special that's airing on grief on Monday night that I'm still putting together. So, one of those days. In business, competition's always good because it drives us to get better. Yep. Same true in broadcast journalism? To totally, yes, I think so. I mean, we have a new television station. Great question. Um, we have a new television station, and I have a lot of friends who work there. And yes, look, our phones have cannibalized every single thing we do. So you all can sit here and tell me the weather and tell me all the news stories that I'm about to tell you at 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, and 11. <laughs> so what you hope is, thanks, Emily, um, what you hope is, is that you can bring something more than just that. Hi, Maria. Hi. Thank you for being here. Thank you for How coming. can we help you with good news? Like the 300 children that get fed every afternoon at the Brockton Boys and Girls okay, Club. Okay, ready, stop. I, got, I have an answer for you. And then you can finish. That's it. How we do have we a have? No, we have a segment. So that's the number one question I'm telling you I always get in my career. How, why don't you do good news? My mother, God rest her soul, um, would always say to me, um, why isn't there any good news? Why are you smiling? I'm like, Mom, I'm talking about a murder. <laughs> what, what do you want? We have a segment. It's called Five for Good. It might be quick, but it's where it's, I live for it because it's 30 seconds. You send me an email to the station. Ready? You have a pen? mstefanos at hearst.com and say, hey, Maria, I stood up and you interrupted me. <laughs> and I'll remember you. I will sit on the set at 4 o'clock, or we'll stand. And I'll talk about terrible things that have happened. And I will remind myself, like my parents always said, that it could always be worse. That, and if people are nasty to you or whatever, they just wonder where, what's happened to them in their lives. So I am grateful for all the moments of all the days of my life. Thank, thank you all you so and, uh, much. Thank you. thank you. Thank you to Barrett's. Thank you to, to the Chamber of Commerce. Great, great questions. Okay. Thank you to all of you. 142 Crescent Street, the site of not only the Stairway to Recovery, but the Gandhara Center. One on many stops for those recovering from addiction. September was recovery month and Brockton held a special ceremony to recognize those that have fought the fight. Let's take a look. Good morning and welcome to uh, Brockton City Hall. I appreciate the great turnout we've got today for the city's uh, recognition and celebration of Recovery Month today. The month of September is Recovery Month and uh, we are supporting people in recovery, supporting the families of people in recovery, and helping to assist others to get into recovery. First, I wanted to uh, open the program with the recognition of the clothesline t-shirt project that you see hanging above you. Uh, I think that we displayed last year's for the first time here in City Hall. And uh, I am just really intrigued and moved by this t-shirt project, the way that it gives people in recovery a way to express themselves and to send a message because sometimes that's really hard to do. We're still overcoming stigma and uh, we're still overcoming barriers. So I think that uh, for folks in recovery to be able to help strengthen their own recovery by being able to communicate like this, but also to get the rest of us to think a little bit about some of the messages that are up there is, is just really critical. So uh, this, is, this project is from Stairway to Recovery, one of our great partners in the Champion Plan. And I'd like to invite up Samuel and Domingos to come up and just give us a few words on the T-shirt project. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, the project started like three years ago with all two females, members from the center, Crystal and Tina. 
you know, they wanted to express something to the community, as the major says, you know, sometimes we want to send a message, and it's hard to send it to the people. So uh, these two females came with the idea of making shirts to express our feelings and emotions for the people to see it, that there is a hope for people on the outside and a message for the community to stick together. Every shirt up there is a life. Uh, it's the struggle, the pain, the suffering, the tears that we, uh, in our recovery, have, have put on this work. Uh, it means uh, uh, all the hopes, disappointments, and, and dreams that we have. Every shirt up there is, is a brother or sister uh, that uh, some of them are here, some of them are not. Um, when I came to uh, Brockton, I was struggling in my own recovery. Um, Stay away gave me the chance and opportunity not only to work on my recovery, but uh, to meet uh, my, my co-peers, we become a family. A true champion that, doesn't, that goes unnoticed is Corin uh, uh, Capiello. Thank you very much for everything you do. I was looking at one of the uh, shirts. There is no person walking the face of the earth who demonstrates more courage, dignity, honesty, and integrity on a daily basis. And that just hit home to me. You are not alone. You've taken your pain and suffering and turned it to help those who come behind you. I know John Green, uh, who lives in Easton, he, he and his wife have a wonderful program, No First Time. They came to the State House as a result of their presentation at the State House. They got, I think, somewhere between eight and 14 high schools, reps from other areas of the state who saw what they had to offer and said, come and speak to our high school too. Thanks, John. You are a true champion. Joanne Peterson, probably the first to really make this public and try to remove the stigma that many families who have suffered in silence. You were a, a trailblazer on this issue before people were talking about it, before it was in the forefront. You continue to do so. Thank you for your work. We started about a year and a half ago. It's our version of police-assisted recovery. Uh, folks walk into the police station and just by asking for help, our champion plan, Stairway to Recovery volunteers are there within 15, 20 minutes and to offer their assistance to get the person out of the police station into a safe haven and ultimately into treatment. A champion plan is placing people in treatment on average, on average, in less than two hours, which to me is just impossible, but they're doing it. And there's a lot of things that differentiate the Champion Plan, our recovery coaches, the fact that we speak multiple languages. Um, but I do want to share with you that in about a year and a half, as of this weekend, the Champion Plan has now done over 700 placements into treatment in a year and a half. I urge all residents of the city of Brockton to observe this month with appropriate programs, activities, and ceremonies joining all of our partners that you see here today to support this year's Recovery Month. And this is signed and sealed by the Mayor of Brockton. And uh, I think for this year, because they've been such great partners to us in the Champion Plan, the folks who are receiving the training, who are out on the front, live, front lines, saving lives every day, uh, I'd like to present this to Stairway to Recovery for them to have this year. Who is that friend? Or, here we go. If you or a loved one are suffering from addiction, please visit the City of Brockton website to get more information on the Champion Plan. Recovery and the celebration of people that have recovered isn't just one month, it's year round. And to highlight that, we're gonna go back in time a little bit to Campanelli Stadium where the Night Out for Recovery was held. I, I just think this is a really special night. We've got a great combination of uh, agencies and organizations that are all uh, involved in the, the battle against addiction. 
uh, our champion plan and the Mayor's Overdose, uh, Opioid, Opioid Overdose Coalition, along with EB Hope, are some of the primary sponsors. But uh, we've got a lot of folks here that are taking this challenge on. We've got, you know, people in recovery, people supporting people in recovery, and, and we've got families that have been deeply impacted by this uh, drug addiction crisis. So I just think it's so encouraging. Uh, that we're out here with a night, a night out for recovery at the ball game. I think it shows that we're finally getting the stigma off of this uh, crisis and that people are willing to come out publicly and work together to take it on. We're here with Larry Curtis, host of A Deadly Silence on both radio and Brockton Community Access, uh, Public Channel 9. Larry, tell us about Night Out for Recovery, what you have to do with it, and what brings you out here to Campanelli Stadium. Well, uh, as you mentioned, uh, as the host of A Deadly Silence on both Brockton Cable Access and on WBBF Radio out of Taunton, uh, it's all about education and awareness. You know, uh, tonight, Night Out for Recovery is a major step forward in bringing recovery organizations together to allow them to share the information to those families who may be dealing with a substance abuse disorder. Uh, not knowing how to, you know, access this information, where to go, what questions to ask, how to get the services that are available out there for their loved ones. Champion Plan is a our version of a police-assisted recovery program um, that is unique to Brockton. So individuals can walk into Brockton Police Department that are suffering from a substance use disorder and ask for help and we will help them um, based on what their needs are. So some individuals need detox, some it may be outpatient therapy, some medically assisted treatment, or um, some maybe just someone to talk to and listen to. And then from there, um, if they do need a treatment bed, we provide all transportation through Brewster Ambulance, and we follow up with all individuals that are part of our program within 72 hours with recovery coaches and um, follow up with them forever. We'd say that once you're part of the champion plan, you're part of our family for life. Location is Brockton Police Department. That is the point of entry. And once you go through there and you're cleared, uh, we, you are picked up by recovery coaches through our partners at Gondara Center. All right, we're here with the South Shore Hospital Mobile Simulation Laboratory. What we do is we go around to the different police and fire departments uh, mainly the fire department paramedics and do some in-service training with them. With the EB Hope and some of the different organizations here tonight, we've actually gone out and we'll have the citizens come in and actually show them what somebody um, with an overdose would look like with the pinpoint pupils, the shallow respirations, and then allow them to actually administer the Narcan to the mannequin and then we'll have the mannequin you know, return back to normal respiratory rate. The opioid problem is very similar in Plymouth County as it is everywhere. It's a significant problem that needs to be worked on by everybody in our community. And I think that we're doing that in a variety of different agencies working together, trying to get in front of this terrible problem. We're back on the south side of town at the Gilmore School. The administrators that ran the Huntington School up until last year are now located here. Led by Mary Beth O'Brien, the principal, they wanted to get the year started off right. So they combined forces with the United Way to have a United Way Day of Caring event held right here. We were there for the action. Let's check it out. Hi, we're here at the Gilmore Elementary School. I'm Mary Beth O'Brien, the principal. Um, this is our new space. We moved here this September from the Huntington School and we are in a beautiful new location. As you can see, we have some great fields. We have this big, huge parking lot. We have a beautiful indoor space. Um, but one of the things that we really take pride in is helping our students understand that we're a community that cares, that we have a fun, safe space for us to go into um, and that really learning can be fun. As an expanded learning time school and an eight hour school day, one of the things uh, that we really teach our students is the balance between hard work and effort but also safe play. Um, and one of our initiatives here is Playworks, Enrichment and the YMCA. So when our students engage in those activities, it's all about teamwork, having a good time, um, and really persevering through challenging tasks. 
coming in here, you can see that there are all of these wonderful um, United Way supporters. Um, and when Aaron Spaulding from the YMCA, when we were meeting about our partnership this year, one of the great things that we talked about was this great United Way Day of Caring. And if we wanted to submit some projects, um, for this day that would allow us to really beautify our space and help our students to see that it's not just them alone, it's a whole community that cares about them. The United Way supports um, nine amazing initiatives at the YMCA and the Y is a proud recipient of United Way funding. Um, one of our sort of more unique uh, collaborations is um, really joining partnership, um, joining hands with the Brockton Public Schools to look at different ways where we can extend the learning day um, in the summer and after school in creative and unique ways to eliminate the academic achievement gap um, and we have a really neat partnership with the um, Huntington now Gilmore Elementary in the Raymond um, to provide enrichment um, as part of their extended learning time grants um, and so these kids get um, as students at both schools get 60 minutes of enrichment from the YMCA um, and so as the United Way Dave caring approach it kind of came um, came up that it would be a really neat thing to welcome um, sort of the former Huntington students to a new school and make them feel a little more comfortable here by um, having people volunteer their time to sort of spruce up the school and make them feel a little more welcomed. Um, it might be intimidating to be in a new school environment. Um, and so we have amazing people from Enterprise Rent-A-Car and UPS that um, are volunteering their time today. What group are you with? We're with Enterprise. I'm with UPS. Are you detail-oriented? Because you got to be detailed here. We try to, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's one of the things we do at UPS, so we're glad to uh, bring it over to the, uh, you know, to the school, help them out. We have 16 people here um, from Enterprise Holdings, and we offer all of our employees um, one day every six months to volunteer for a community care day. Um, and Becky, our HR manager here, tries to organize it so that we can all do it together, because I think when you work for a United Way organization, together you can really see where your money goes. We put a couple of projects together here because we said, you know, we would really like a welcoming environment so that the minute the kids come onto their uh, playground, they can see that learning can be fun, it's bright, and it's welcoming. What's your favorite color? Pink. 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 And you? <laughs> I love red. And you, ma'am, with your blue. Is blue your favorite by any chance? Yes, it is. <laughs> And you wouldn't happen to like green, would you? Green is one of my favorites. <laughs> oh, what's your favorite? Pink. Oh, was there a struggle? <laughs> Our favorite game at Playworks, led by our phys ed teacher, Mr. McCarthy, is that of Foursquare, and our kids have a great time with that. We have some hopscotch, um, which I think is the brightest hopscotch I've ever seen, and it's really fun. These 50 states are going to be beautiful by the time we're done. We just cleaned um, up Texas. We just cleaned oh. up Texas. This is being taped. <laughs> and this is a map so the kids can jump on it and learn from it and talk about the states while they're having fun and exercising. What might be the most difficult state? Um, I don't know. What do we think, guys? To California? Paint? Yes. It takes it takes a lot of effort to paint California and Texas because of their size, mm -hmm. but yeah. it's worth it because they're beautiful. One of the biggest things that we're trying to instill in our in our students around civic responsibility, pride, and caring for one another is our peace and kindness walkway. So that as they enter the school, they know that peace and kindness begins with them. And it's the way that they show that they care about their community and they care for their peers, that that's the, the first step in really establishing a safe and welcoming environment. And I think one of the things that we all know is that no student really wants to be in a place unless they know people are here and they care about them and that they want them to succeed. And what better way to show them that we want them to be here, that we want to be here, than really investing in some manual labor, although that's what everybody else is doing. I'm just pretending. No, I'm kidding. Um, but really, if you look around, this is definitely a place that cares and there are plenty of people that want to really believe in our students and invest in their future. And that's exactly what we see here today. So we're really excited. Live United!
Well, there you have it, Brockton. Another one North Main in the books. We hope you enjoyed meeting some of Brockton's finest people and being part of some of the best events. To learn more about Brockton Community Access, please visit our website at bcatv.org. You can also check out our YouTube page, youtube.com backslash the Brockton channels, all one word. For executive producer Mark Lindy and producer Aaron Tebow, I'm Jay Miller, and we'll see you around town. I'll even go like this. So it really looks like I'm doing something. I get a couple of angles of this. You're doing a great job. <laughs>